tell you more you can, later. You just you got a you got a blank check. A blank check. You can make more money than you're doing what you do now. Welcome back, and uh, one of our best analysts of geopolitical and military issues is uh, Tim Alexander. And Tim will be popping in more in our first hour open lines on Monday, Tuesday, and Thursdays. And also putting, uh, starting back up now, putting a lot more video clips up. He will be launching very shortly a, a newsletter. And this newsletter will expand on what he already has at Europe Business with one s.blogspot.com which is an excellent analysis, uh, which will also have some inserted hyperlinks to our live stream premium channel, which you'll be posting up. So uh, when Tim does this, you want to get this, okay? Uh, it'll be a small fee, probably, what, 5 or $6 uh, a month, or if you get a yearly membership or whatever, but it's going to be essential. And whenever you want to announce that you're going to be able to get this done, Tim, uh, your analysis is different. I mean, we have uh, Joel Skousen, who I consider one of the best news analysts out there. You're a read up there with Joel. Uh, people need to hear your information and analysis because you take it from a Christian point of view, but you understand the military technology and the implementation on multi level like Space Chess, the Star Trek. You also understand the satanic evil behind some of these policies because the normal mortal kind of conventional nor- mind can't wrap it around the craziness of what's going on. They just don't, they, they just don't go there, but you can and you can understand this and explain it in simple enough terms to make people say, "Wow, uh, that's why I see these Geneva talks going this way. That's why I see them still crazy over Syria. That's why I see them still rabid to, to attack Iran, even though we're going to have a thermonuclear war in the Middle East." But you explain it in a way, and each of your blog issues, which is up on europebusiness.blogspot.com, and you have a, a short description, this newsletter will expand on that dramatically with video clips. It's going to be a blockbuster. So yeah, I want to really encourage you on that, because I, I think this I, is going I, to be I, I, important for, for people to get on a regular basis. Yeah, I, I, uh, what I'm, uh, I'm doing is uh, I don't like the, the old background that I use, which is my office. Uh, too many people do offices, and I'm thinking of FDR's fireside chats. And I have a nice fireplace in my living room, but uh, it's a fireplace. Well, I just bought a gas insert, and I'm uh, uh, arranging I got a solution for you. Up. I'll tell you what you do. You take a, a real good high resolution picture. You go down to one of the printing shops and print out a large I know, I know how to poster, do that, I want the real and you simply thing. hang it behind where you're uh, where you're going to do no, your. I, you can buy them. Uh, you can do that for 150 yeah. bucks. But no, I want the yeah. real thing. And uh, oh, you're going to have you're going to have a, 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 a you know, have Tim's fireside chats of of the end of the age. How's that? Uh, yeah, uh, and uh, I'm I'm going to do that and. Um, you know, I, I use the, the the large sterling, the Earl Sterling title on the the web thing because oh, it makes me sound like I know uh, I, I know more than I do maybe. But I'm really very much Tim Alexander from Evansonia, and yeah. I want to to have a format where I talk to people one-on-one, and that, I can do that very well. I mean, I literally have talked to some of the highest-ranking uh, people in, in the world. I've had kings send me gifts. Uh, I, you know, I, I can sit down and talk to, to anybody, and yet at the same time, I, I'm just as much at home talking to an earl in front of his old yeah. castle uh, as uh, I am to a, a poor to farmer who, uh, who, who doesn't have two pennies to rub together. Tim, we know what impresses me about what you do it's not what you know and this is what's really important you know Einstein said this knowledge is not as important as imagination and what's the key to imagination it's the ability to ask questions to expand your worldview and you have that capacity to ask better questions which means your imagination can go places where you haven't been before just like the line the tagline for Star Trek to go to places where no man has gone before. <laughs> and the thing is, when you ask these questions, you start to connect the dots and you realize what really is going on in your world on a spiritual well, level, yeah, on a physical I'll, I'll level, geopolitical. Uh, Dr. Bell, I'll tell you a couple things that are going on right now uh, that I think are, are should people should pay attention to. The U- 
Ukrainian rights uh, that are going riots. on. Are, are, are the riots, riots, yeah. Yes, riots are virtually a, uh, a civil, a very, one step from a civil war. The uh, so-called protesters are outfitted in uh, helmets. Uh, they have, uh, in some cases, uh, uh, trenches like the police officers do. In other cases, they have uh, guns. They have axes. I, I got a question for you. I, I, I know some background research on this. This is supported by George Soros and the European banksters. Of course, of who, course. Who don't course. want, who are, are making sure they pay for the equipment and the truncheons and the body armor and everything because they want a civil war. They were just greedy maniacs wanting to suck in the, the, uh, the, the uh, Ukrainians who were desperate. Their economy was collapsing. Ukraine is the breadbasket of, of Euro-Asia. It's the best place to grow food. There's two places in, in the world where, which is northern United States, like North Dakota, South Dakota, and, and, the, and the states in uh, Canada, yeah. and southern Canada, you know, like we're talking about the areas around, you know, Saskatchewan, Manitoba. You can't believe, and the reason it's the bottom of an old ancient lake. And the same way is Ukraine. There's areas there that have such ancient, fantastic soil. It's the best place on earth to grow grain, crops, anything you want to grow. You can Those grow there. Those are the, the two greatest uh, 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 grain-growing areas on earth. And right. the battle is between the West, who wants to break uh, the Ukraine up with austerity fascism and destroy it, and Russia, which sees the Ukraine as part of the old Russian Empire long before the USSR had it. And uh, the United States has been uh, financing, supporting, controlling, and influencing many of these uh, groups in in uh, the Ukraine. Uh, people like Soros. When we say United States, it's not us. It's not you. No, and I. we're American. Our, 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 listen, uh, the, our nation. Our we don't have a, a federal government. We have a proxy globalist government that has supplanted. Exactly. It, it's, it's like it's like you know it's been taken over by a a, a nano machine. We, we have a sock puppet for George Soros that has to be have be rectally uh, inserted one of the hands of one of his globalist masters or the puppet masters with the titanium strings hanging and pulling him. But he's a, he's a cooperative puppet because the man, Obama, is soulless, evil, maniac out of his mind. Well, and he's, fact, he's, the, he's the third coke addict in a row that we've had as president, and the second gay or bisexual coke addict in a row. Well, that it's we've it's, had it's as not president. just that. You see, the, the thing that drove Satan crazy and made him evil was narcissism. It's, there's no doubt. Looking as a medical doctor, when you look psychiatrically at Obama, he the reason why he is so patently evil, and we see this all the great evil men in history. Uh, whether it's Genghis Khan, Alexander the Great, whoever, they were narcissistic, they were talented, and they were driven. They were manic. And we have a man who isn't very super intelligent, who's very schmoozy in terms of social things, unbelievably narcissistic Obama, and absolutely devoid of morality. Yeah, absolutely. And you have that combination, he will is willing to do any sexual or other act in order to gain more narcissistic pleasure, hitting the dopamine centers of the brain saying that you're fantastic, you are messianic, mister, I have a pen and I have a phone. And when you make well, those statements, I'm thinking... the President of the United States and the mayor of Chicago uh, held membership in the biggest gay bathhouse in uh, Chicago. And uh, I'm not going to go into details, but... Uh, well, they sold their bodies so that they could move yeah. forward uh, in, in politics and other, and other business deals. And it's the same way as the... As uh, Jimmy Savile in Britain with the BBC and the uh, hierarchy of the of the of the British government, many of the upper crust are pedophilic maniacs of their mind. But the same here in America, people want to say, "Oh, it's not well, the in same." Britain, and the, re or the reason for that is is many of the upper class kids are sent to uh, what we call private schools. They call them public schools. Yeah, but uh, it, it, it's what, what came first, the chicken or the eggs? They want a private schools, just like the private Catholic schools, so they could get at the boys. Okay, uh, the reason. Why, and I'm going to make a joke here because I was an altar boy myself uh, from age uh, seven right to age 14 when I got attacked by a priest. Okay, he didn't get his way. I call them altered boys. <laughs> And I was a high altar boy, which I got a dispensation from the archbishop, so I knew lots of things and did lots of advanced masses in Latin, uh, including knowing all the prayers in a cappella and uh, the Gregorian chants, etc. So I know that pedophilia is tied to these globalist elite maniacs.
because it's we'll satanic. Be back. It's, it's satanic, the exactly. They're satanists. There you go. Right back to King Abdullah. Abdullah's the guy. Well, I know, yeah, yeah. And we're back with Tim Alexander again. His blog is Europe Business with one S dot blogspot.com. And I guess if I was going to write a whodunit about what's going on now with the Sochi Olympics, I'd have to write it. The whodunit would be. That Abdullah done it. <laughs> well, yeah, you know, it's kind of the usual suspects. It's uh, the the yeah. uh, the Saudis. It's uh, Bibi Netanyahu who sits on the top of this uh, heap of corpses, uh, d- directing everything towards the Third World War, Armageddon. And uh, it's the globalists who who desire. You know, they've set the world up for. We're in a new global depression. They've set the world world up for this coming economic collapse, which is going to make the current depression we're in look like child's play. But, and but here, here's what they're going to do. It's, like, it's going to, it's going to they they're going to waterboard war. us. They're going to kill enough people and frighten enough people. They'll accept the next level, which is what's called the authentication virtual currency with no money in your pocket. Illegal to use barter or even exchange gold Mark and silver. Of Mark of the beast. And people say, no, Dr. Deagle, you're so delusional. I said, no, I'm not. There's not a person that's ever had a pulse or drawn breath that knows more about the mark of the beast than I do. And I challenge anyone out there, including people on radio and television, whatever, to specifically, I'm going to give them specific details. And I haven't released all that I know. It's a lot. I released some of it back in 1999 when I traveled. It's called Iridium Mark of the Beast video with the Prophecy Club. People need to realize, step by step by step, every single step has taken us, including the, the not doing nothing about Fukushima Daiichi, allowing the, uh, the, the uh, Glass-Steagall to, to, to not be reinstated so the credit thing goes crazy, allowing King Abdullah to threaten the heck out of the Russians in the Social Olympics, allowing us to transfer yeah, you're, you're equipment right. and missiles oh, to Saudi Arabia and Israel to start an all attack on it. Those it's all interrelated. It, it's all part of a collapse and destruction. It's called the ceremony of the phoenix, which the ancient Egyptians did in Sumer. They call it Pahanuk. Uh, the ancient ceremony of destruction, where they bring about the destruction and the decay, and then they rise from it like the phoenix bird and create a new order of the ages, a new order, the Novus new Order Seclorum. Yeah, look, to do this, they have to have a war. And Putkin is very, very shrewd. He knows the game. He knows who they are. He knows what they're doing. He doesn't being an intelligent person doesn't want to go into World War Three. No, he no, no. He doesn't want that. But no. They're pushing him, and and the 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 virtual military riots, uh, the near civil war that's going on in the Ukraine, Russia's breadbasket, Russia's back door, that which was ruled with and by the Russian Tsar for centuries, they that's that's to prod Russia. Uh, now. Worst case scenario, it gets out of hand. Russia has to send troops in. The EU send troops in, and and World War Three starts or something. I don't think that's going to happen. But what no, no, no. is what what is going on in in the Ukraine is something to really, really. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you what it is. The Russian bear I'll, off. Because I'll tell you what it is. Second step. Hold it. Let me finish. The second yeah. step is the Olympics, and when the Olympics happen, there's every indication uh, that something really bad is going to happen at the Olympics. And I'll tell you why. Yeah. When I look, one of the things, if you want to see what's coming, is watch what the mainstream, globalist-owned, Zionist-ran news media is prepping you for. And right. we're being prepped for some bad, nasty stuff that the quote-unquote terrorists in Russia are going to do uh, in the Olympics. We have two missile destroyers uh, off the Russian coast near where the Olympics will be held in case we have to quote unquote rescue Americans. Now now think about this. If the Russians or Soviets have put uh, a battle fleet off of uh, the west coast or east coast when we held the Olympics, uh, we would have went ape. Okay, let me explain what, how this is a theater, okay? This is not reality. 
Give you an example. If you got a black widow or white widow terrorist, a female, that drives a truck full of you know high explosives and nails or, or ball bearings in there to kill a lot of people, what, what are you talking about rescuing? Once they've killed 5,000 people and injured another 20,000, does it matter? How, what are you going to do, rescue people that are bleeding? Rescue people that are already now in the ICU or intubated or they're blown to bits and you're going to pick up the pieces and put them in a, in a basket so you can go and identify which body part belongs to which body? The fact is, this is a pile of garbage. All of this is doing is telling people, we're going to scare the hell out of you, so whatever financial arrangements we give you after we scare you or blow up your people or kill people at the Social Olympics, they can't sell tickets enough to fill all the seats now because of what they've done to the Russians. The Russians really put an effort out to put a top-notch uh, venues for all these Olympics, and they're embarrassing the heck out of the Russians. And this is another one of the browbeating things of the bankers to say, now, if you don't play ball, this is what we're going to do. You're not going to fill your seats in the Social Olympics. We're going to kill your citizens, and we're going to send the Chechens into your country and into your shopping areas of your big city, Moscow, etc., and we're going to blow them right, up, too. But now let me ask you this. Do, do you really think Mr. Putin is going to sit back and let the globalist media uh, 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 say, well, this was some little minor well, no, here, here, extremist here's what, group? Do you here's what I expect he's to sit see. back and take a false flag strike on Russia at the Olympics? No, well, here, no but you're going to still have dead bodies. What he's going to do is he's probably going to send his Delta or special Russian forces in to Saudi Arabia and take out you know reprisals. But that's not going to solve the problem. When push comes to shove, neither Russia nor America or Europe is going to agree to something that's going to make it extremely evident that immediately if you start full force conflict, you're going to go to thermonuclear, biological, and chemical exchange. So it's going to put people in a position to accept the peace treaty, which I'm going to say now, this is the first time I'm saying it, thus saith the Lord, we're going to have the peace treaty this year or next, period. And when that peace treaty starts, the, t the clock starts ticking in the last seven years on the Feast of, of Tabernacles, the Feast of David. That is by rabbinic law and by, by the Bible means that this year and next, the last seven years is going to start. And the reason is all of these factors converge, economic collapse, biological collapse, H1N1 flu, Fukushima, and all these things going on between Saudi Arabia and Russia and Syria. All of this is converging to tell you, if you don't give me what I want, which is pressing control over the financial system of the world to an unelected bunch of bureaucrats that can print electronic money and take away all your currencies from all your countries. Look at what Obama's doing. The Trans-Pacific Partnership and the TTIP, these are designed to basically say, and I don't, don't care if you're Ugandan. don't know the details of that yet. And I know enough. I'll there's 25 horrific. chapters, 25 chapters in the Trans-Pacific Partnership, only five deal with the economy. The other five deal with everything. 20, 20 deal with the internet, with production, with, with uh, freedom of speech and freedom of religion and everything else you can imagine. It means you're going to, when this is passed, and this is a treaty, and he wants the right to actually validate the treaty without Congress or the Senate or any public discussion because this is the final grab for power to hand it over to the globalists. And what they're doing right now with the Social Olympics is they're going to try to force the Russians and the Chinese. The Chinese are, economy is about to pop. And they're doing everything to squeeze the Chinese. So through their proxies, all the transnational corporations now are pulling out factories out of China and but moving them to Indonesia and a, India. They're having a problem in that they're such thieves. They have oversold every do, every ounce of gold by about 150 times. And the reason right. that the EU and France is in the Central African Republic is their gold mines there. Yeah, back, back in a moment. Welcome back, and we have Chris Harris, our nuclear expert. Uh, Chris, uh, there's a couple technical questions I want you to, to kind of expand upon. We, we're, how far are we of that 1,500 and plus nuclear fuel rod assemblies they were trying to pull out of that cooling pool? Uh, have we got number one, two, those cooling pool assemblies, they're getting to the ones that are bent like a, like a bent ha hanger, which means they're going to either drop and lose the fuel rod pellets, or we're going to end up with a critical reaction in pyrophoric fire. The third question is, are there any signs of decay of the seal you've talked about for a few years? Nobody else has talked about this. 
that will cause a leakage and a loss of the water around the reactor, a fuel rod assembly bundles, because we've lost the boronated rubber already, that's evident. Um, so I expect that is a grave danger. So we could have a power fork fire just from pulling these bent fuel rod assemblies. The danger of losing the containment fluid because of the weakening of the, of the seal. And the third is subsidence, which means the area is like kind of, you know, radioactive mush around the, the, the settling underneath these fuel rod assemblies. So there's listing. They could have hit inclinometers <clears throat> on these towers, which are 60 to 100 feet above the ground. The likelihood of a nuclear event releasing a massive pyrophoric fire is a virtual certainty. And if an earthquake six or seven makes them fall over or just time, uh, we're going to have a major airborne and ground-based release. We have the possibility of the corium, which is now 75 feet below at least. No one's done ground penetrating radar or anything else, causing a critical reaction and venting out to the Pacific Ocean and into rock formations that go all the way back to Tokyo and their subway system. Uh, we have the very real possibility of a kind of small nuclear explosions like the MOX reactor explosion, which we're pretty certain MOX reactor 3 was a nuclear explosion which threw debris rod assembly pieces as far away as 60 miles uh, from the Fukushima plant. Um, the, the poisoning of these longer acting isotopes now is reaching that 1,000 day model, which means we're going to get a massive surge as the ocean of death, I call it the plutonium sea now, is what we should rename the Pacific, um, is going to really start freaking people out. And the reason why they have this blocking high off the west coast is because the um, if, if Californians and Coloradans and uh, Virginians and people in Washington, D.C. got acute nosebleeds and diarrhea and mental confusion and vertigo, and all the other signs of non-healing skin lesions, etc., of acute radiation sickness, you would have a civil disruption that would bring America into an immediate state of national emergency. And these blocking highs have turned much of the West Coast into a desert. We haven't had a good rain in getting close to nine months. And that means that we're at the point now as they continue to block the radiation, they know these levels are going to get so damned high that when they bring rainfall in here, just like we had radioactive rain picked up in Missouri a few weeks ago, that uh, people are going to start getting, showing signs of not chronic low-grade sickness, which basically aggravates any medical condition or pre-medical condition they have, but you're going to see acute radiation sickness where people are going to start freaking out, especially when they realize where the heck are the sea lions, how come there's no sardines, what happened to 80% of the, of the, of the uh, salmon run, we're going to start seeing Lots of things happen. Animals in the forest dying. We see this now happening in British Columbia and, and Alaska where the uh, the bears and so on that eat these fish are developing lesions and dying. <laughs> We're going to see it in distant areas where we think, well, too bad for you people on the West Coast. By the way, most of this radiation is carried in high altitude, so it's going to be carried where the mountains can scrape it out or where it descends in, in different air masses as they meet in the Midwest or on the East Coast, or carries it over the pole as he picked up jam in uh, the Eastern European countries that was radioactive with cesium-137. And two years ago, they picked up plutonium. So a big correction for those people who think it's poor you West Coasters, we're actually probably lucky because we have hardly seen a drop of rain we're at low altitudes. Um, this is, I think, the fulcrum event, Fukushima, that's going to push the world over to a state of such chaos, along with everything else going on, that we're going to have the peace treaty signed this year or next. So one here are the technical issues, what's happening with Fukushima, because like they say in the mobsters, nobody knows nothing and nobody's doing nothing. It's just insane how incompetent the collective geopolitical and scientific uh, community is dealing with these issues. It's just disgusting. Well, Your comments, Chris? Yeah, I guess uh, probably the bigger part of the uh, status on Unit 3 from last week was a robot was sent in to do some work in debris removal, and it found a pretty good-sized water leak. I'm going to get into what this really means in a minute, but I do want to thank... Uh, wait, wait, which reactor was that? Which reactor was that, uh, Chris? Now, that's the bad yeah, one. That's the MOX reactor, three. which we know is an occult nuclear weapons plutonium detonator manufacturing plant against international law and creating high-grade plutonium as a detonator for 
what's called spontaneous neutrons, which are a trigger for uh, hypercritical reactions that create nuclear explosions. This is the same kind of thing that went on at the Savannah River plant because it took care of employees back in the late 80s. That were, it was at that time, after Hanford was closed, the sole plant making our plutonium detonators for warheads. So the Japanese were doing it at Fukushima and the MOX Reactor 3 was an occult nuclear weapons program. In conjunction, by the way, with the Israelis. Well, uh, what, what happened was, so it was incidentally found this week. I, like I said, I wanted to thank some people who contribute a lot of information to me, also like simplyinfo.org and informable.com and, Fuka, and uh, Fukushima Diary, because there's some, some, some good information that comes out that way and lets me oh, talk yeah. about some issues on here. I really appreciate that. But anyway, so a robot finds a leak that was doing work, and now, now all of a sudden this means a lot of things. First of all, this means... Uh, the water that was supposed to be this is this is this is going to be my my best guess is where is this water coming from and uh tepco actually also said that uh that this water was supposed was supposed to be for the cooling of uh, unit three which means right. it's highly radioactive after it comes out now here here's this is what else it means so i'd like to just ver- uh, verbalize this for a second if a robot incidentally finds a leak when it's sent into a specific area to do some work, how many other leaks are there that they haven't discovered yet? See, that, see you have to ask that question, too. And I, I, I'm going to expect to find many different kinds of leaks. Uh, so right. that means that all the cooling that, that you'd expect to be getting from the cooling water system that they pretty much was flimsy, hastily tossed together, is not doing the complete job. And uh, to... Uh, well, uh, not cooling a nuclear reactor that could go critical and cause a nuclear explosion is a bad thing because it becomes a large dirty bomb. Well, it's already a dirty bomb, but... Uh, but, I mean, it can explode, literally. We're not just talking about a pyrophoric fire. We're talking about a nuclear explosion. But, right? okay, what... Uh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. But what well, we're doing... Well, well, let's just like to get, get this thought out. It means a lot of things also... It also means that the containment was broken, like we thought about a long time ago. In this case, Stepco believes that, and they, I sent you some information on that, that one of the main steam line penetrations, which are very durable in this case, is no longer that durable and is porous because they're, they're believing that the water is coming from the, um, uh, actually from inside the containment vessel itself. So there's a lot of it means a lot of things. Also, the water is uh, very is very heavily laden with contaminants, radioactive contaminants, and it's uh, basically flowing freely to wherever it's going, probably to the basement uh, of the reactor building. And in this case, we know the reactor building is porous. Also, so there's really no containment at Unit Three. So Unit Three is really uh, too deadly for even humans to go there. They'll get. The equivalent in, in cyberts of radiation that in one hour they'll die. So you can't send somebody in there even if they're suicidal. They're just going to become uh, blood, blibbering and drooling idiots within minutes, and within an hour they're dead. So um, we come back, we'll look at the, the whole situation of these other things, the cooling pools of how, when we expect to see a pyrophoric fire, because it's going to happen. An accident's going to happen, or on purpose, is because they know keep pulling these things and moving fuel rod pellets and assemblies that are bent. It's not going to be a good situation. And uh, <clears throat> the whole place should be turned into a crystalline, coronated sarcophagus instead of moving these things around. Chris Harris back, and uh, let's move on to cooling pool number four and what's happening there. Uh, Chris Harris, cooling pool four, uh, what's the update? I'd like to give a little update on how many assemblies were removed. Well, it's since November, so just uh, this week, I moved 220 fuel assemblies. And where do they move them to? They move them from cooling pool number four to the common cooling pool, right? And uh, when when will they have that full? Because you mentioned on the break that they're getting near the full mark, which means, number one, it's stupid because you, you don't have the checkerboard pattern where there's often spaces between fuel rod assemblies in the common pool. 
And number two, uh, if you're going to put them in dry cask, which is the other way to store them, you have to do them a specific way, or you have a danger of, of a radiation release. Well, you got to get the well. I, the, the plan would be to take the common in the common spent fuel pool. You take the fuel that's been sitting there for 10 years or so, because that's, that's how long it takes for it to cool down enough where you can put it in dry gas, which uh, which we, we do use here, but only for very old fuel. And so right. my, my concern so you, is that... So you got well, three compartments of fuel. Chris, let me ask you this question. you got three compartments of fuel. Fresh fuel bundles that haven't been bent. Do you pull out, which is the 200 and how many, 250, 225 you mentioned are out now? Yeah, I didn't get the breakdown of how many of the new fuel that's It's somewhere uh, around that. It's it's up around the two hundred. Yeah, and then there's a middle group that, yeah. that's 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 not ten years old and that's the hot stuff that can't be put in dry cask. So you have no idea where to put that, but the the stuff that's beyond ten years, you can dry cask it. So there's a middle bunch of material that's in bent fuel rod assemblies that are less than ten years of age. They have nowhere to put this. And they can't dry cask it because it's not it can't it's not stably safe to put it in a dry cask. So they're, you know, as they say in the military, they're screwed and tattooed. They, they, even if they take it out safely, which is hard to do, and could cause a pyrophoric fire, they have no place to put that middle group of, of radioisotope uh, fuel rod assembly bundles, even if they can technically get them out, which is finically difficult. It's going to be really crazy. So the chances of an accident now are going to dramatically increase. It's very complicated. It's a shell game. What you do with the, with the fuel? Okay, I got it out of here, out of the out of the pool that may collapse, and now I put it into the balance but fuel, but I can't. I don't have enough room for it. So then I have to go ahead and and hastily once again, and and hope and probably cheaply find casks which don't grow on trees. They're specially made, and uh, and and put put them. Just, it's a big project to make a dry fuel. It has to be licensed. Also, I, I don't see that happening either. So it's not going to be licensed. It's going to be uh, probably not. I mean, I don't know what kind of controls there are going to be on on the uh, construction of this or anything else. So they're going to put the, a dry cask uh, storage area in, uh, that may may or may not be sta- uh, up to the standards. But they, and, they, uh, put fuel they didn't in assemb- that. So, they didn't assemble the, uh, the, the 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 temporary storage tanks, which have a in normal conditions have a five year thing that when you're not exposed to neutrons. And you actually read the instructions so they put the proper rivets in so they don't burst. Uh, these people are pikers, as they say. The Yakuza send in people that are homeless, people that are poorly educated, people that are basically getting radiation sickness. They're covering their dissimetry badges with, with lead so they don't show uh, color changes, so they continue to work when their radiation dosage is affecting their brains, their judgment, and their reflexes. Uh, and their ability to 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 not just be the Walking Dead, like you know, like zombies. Um, this is really serious. And what's going to happen? And this is my prediction. I've said for 2014, the collapse or the pyrophoric fire or some major event will eventually cause enough radiation release or accumulated over time, even if it's not one big event, that it will cause the evacuation of Tokyo. That's going to probably happen this year. When that happens you're going to see a collapse of the Japanese economy which caused a bar market run around the world and you're going to see a collapse like 1929. That combined with the ever-increasing threat of war in the Middle East and the saber rattling between the Chinese and the, all the Asian nations including South Korea and Japan is going to precipitate a situation that will result in the peace treaty to hold back the, the wall of fire of a thermonuclear biological and chemical war. Which I believe will ha- that treaty will be signed this year or next because I see, uh, according to Mark Belts and the and Blood Moons, and we discussed this last Tuesday, we're almost certainly uh, this Tuesday we're almost certainly going to be looking at the peace treaty being signed this year or next. Now that's not an absolute and it's not prophecy, but we look at all the signs as we're supposed to be proved and we're going to be you know watchmen on the wall watching these things. All the physical signs say if we don't have a peace treaty, we're going to have a war in the Middle East. If they don't have a new financial order to replace the current one, which isn't working, the world economy is going to blow anyway. It's ready to pop. And something like Fukushima or an airborne plague or a biennial blowout in China, which is very close as well, they're, they're basically insolvent. The Chinese are, in fact, worse off in terms of total amount of debt than the U.S. Federal Reserve by a very large margin. They've increased their amount of total credit. And half of the new loans in China are all what's called shark loans. They're basically you know, like the old movies, 
they're loan sharks. And the public and the private debt in China is insane. And of course, the globalists are now pulling businesses, transnational corporations, and taking and closing factories in China and moving them to Indonesia uh, and to India and elsewhere. So the Chinese are <clears throat> are getting the, <clears throat> the Chinese are getting a major squeeze on them now. And combined with what I see happening in Fukushima, I just I see no imaginative engineering solutions. For example. If you were to take a little fishing boat or yacht and drop a little radiation detector on the seafloor, you're going to go to jail just for even detecting radiation to see if there's a venting vent or if, a radi- if you had what's called ground penetrating radar or if you're a, a diver and just bought a detector and went along the seafloor off of Fukushima just to see if you could find out. Are there venting like in the big island of Hawaii where you have magma, do you have vents? Uh, venting radiation from Fukushima that you need to. They talked about putting concrete down or sealing off the seafloor. They're doing nothing. They're using no imagination. They don't have a seawall up. They don't have a corium catcher. They don't have tents, spider silk over our tents over these different reactors to catch the reactor debris that's aerosolized. Uh, basically, you know, they're doing nothing. It's just it's caretaking till the next disaster happens, which is a guarantee that you're eventually going to run out of workers. You're eventually going to run out of options if an earthquake hits. All bets are off. The whole thing is going to collapse and you're going to get such a high level of radiation. No one will even be allowed to be in the area. And if they do go, they're just going to die very quickly. So what do you think, Chris? Well, it's a huge project and there's so many, uh, there's so much room for error. And I, I, was, I ran a lot of big, mm-hmm. big construction projects in the nuclear mm-hmm. side. But I, I had always had that uh, ability to try to see the end, the end, but all of the all the steps in, in between. But it doesn't look like I, I looked at Fukushima. I said, but there's so much going on. How could any anybody? It's a real big job. Let me just say it's very complicated, and so there's so much room to make mistakes that would uh, yield that kind of. Uh, uh, let me let me translate you. you. You coached that in what I called uh, nuclear safety technical ease. Uh, let's put it this way. If I uh, multiply the fraction of the chance of a, an accident from a number of different sources and uh, you know compound these probabilities, compounded, that if this happens or this or this or this, it's called an OR equation in probability mathematics, and I compounded them all up, the chances of a major nuclear release from any type of a reaction in Fukushima is now approaching 98 to 99 percent in the next three to six months. So there is going to be a major release of radiation. Then, quote, if you say if that happens, <clears throat> will there be enough radiation to make people so acutely sick in Tokyo? Because it's already at very high levels. They should be evacuating right now. You're going to see massive, despite laws that they passed, like the secrecy law and the conspiracy law, massive immediate radiation sickness. <clears throat> They already have blocking highs off the Pacific Coast to make sure that Americans don't get it because we have a free uh, media so far in terms of alternative media and Obama hasn't pulled the internet kill switch or uh, sent blackout forces to take out people like Alex Jones, myself, Rents, etc. and say haul our butts off to a, to a secret civil detention camp or they have an engraved bullet ready for me and my family. This is how desperate this is. These globalists are freaked out. They are out of control. They know that disaster is coming. Their financial system is in disarray. And they're doing nothing to stop Fukushima. They really want some kind of disaster because they want to pull a plug. And they want to have a new financial order because they don't care if it kills billions of people and makes the earth radioactive. <clears throat> What's a few billion people when you want to be God of this earth? Really? Yeah. People need to connect the dots. Why are they doing nothing? There's not even a use of even valid imagination or even collecting data to know if you're eating radioactive fish or breathing air or should you go out when it rains in Missouri. It's insane. It's evil. We need to stand up and show, I'm not going to take it anymore. I'm mad as hell. Your comments, Chris. Yeah, exactly. 